or take a flashback into the Islamic Empire and especially in Andalusia. The characters, the names, names of streets, uh, the signs and uh, um, things uh, to remember from that particular era in history and nobody better to tell us or talk to us or take us, uh, take us in a flashback in that particular time in history but Mr. Bassem Shamma, the historian and author of Egyptology Good morning uh, Mr. Uh, Shamma Good morning to you or as they used to say, good morrow that, good that is the old way of salutation. It was good before it became good morning. It was good morrow. So good mm. morrow. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? <laughs> oh. When it comes to uh, the old oh, English, I don't think that British. others uh, have got, they are going to understand that well. But anyhow, <laughs> we are going to dive into our history yeah. more than anything else, sir. And today we are going to continue what we have started last week. And uh, today it's Al Andalus or Andalusia, as the Spanish That's are saying. Nice. And let's have uh, just a small comparison, or to say, Sarcosta, Sargoza, Ashbilia, Svia, Cordoba, Cordoba, Andalus, Andalusia. Right. Uh, let's speak more about those places, those wonderful places, and the main features of this era. When, when the Muslims were totally responsible for the renaissance of Europe. Excellent. And uh, what a, a nice introduction because that will remind us, uh, for example, of Magritte, mm -hmm. which became then Madrid. Yeah. And uh, by the way, these are not only words that we can read in history books mm -hmm. or we can discuss it in a history episode. Um, one of the very, very good books, mm. uh, which is uh, Al Andalusia, or Al Andalus, searching for the absent identity. This is a book which is translated into Arabic. We've got it here um, mm. in the translation organization of the uh, Minister of uh, Culture. And the guy who wrote the book was a Spanish guy mm. with the name of Julio, and then he titles himself Al Magriti. Mm -hmm. He didn't title himself Al Madridi. He yeah. went back to the origin of the, the word. Arabic word. But talking about cities and talking, and you know that I love Cordoba, mm. and we talked about Cordoba in the last in the time. last episode. But today I shall tell you a good. If we are talking about comparisons, uh, let's compare the four thousand seven hundred silver lanterns in the Great Mosque uh, of Cordoba, dangling down from an ars wood or wooden ceiling. What a beautiful place that is, mm -hmm. and compare this when you were illuminating streets in Cordoba at night. And when, when you need us to show you the, the photos, would you please just let us know? Uh, excellent, thank you very okay. much. And compare between this business of you were illuminating 350 uh, Hijra, year of Hijra, you were illuminating your streets, 900 AD if you like, mm -hmm. and in 1819, 8, 28th of March, mm -hmm. 1819, I'm talking about a very precise date, a newspaper in Germany called Colonia newspaper mm. wrote what? Mm. The gas illuminated streets is a spreading human evil against the godly night, the godly darkness. From their point of view, mm -hmm. the God created the night and you are not acquainted with the fact that this is a godly invention or a godly creation. Mm -hmm. And by this, you are putting lights in the streets made out of gas. You are illuminating the lights. This is against the godly night. Mm -hmm. See how the point of view, I'm talking 1819 in Germany. Mm. And you were how many years before that? Illuminating the streets of Portoba yeah. and illuminating thousands of uh, markets, uh, uh, shops and so on. One of the interesting shops in Cordoba, we, we decided last episode uh, that Cordoba was famous for something we call specialized markets. Mm -hmm. You want to get uh, paper with all its types, go to the market of paper. You want to get medicine, go to the medicine market. One of the interesting markets that I really like its idea is rare flowers market mm -hmm. in Cordoba. Rare flowers. Mm. That will give you what? That will give you they were not only scientists and genius people in medicine, and as we are going to go back to one of the most amazing characters, I keep on reading and get amazed about all the time, but they were also elegant people. They were nice people. They wanted to look nice. For example, tablecloth, something that you never think about in history. Islamic invention mm -hmm. made 
by the Muslims. We have a man called Ziryab. Ziryab musician. comes from ba the, the, yeah. famous, the famous he, musician. Uh, he was from, such from a lovely Baghdad. voice. Yeah. From Baghdad, mm -hmm. and he went to Andalusia. Mm -hmm. He was there. He changes this great goblets that you drink on heavy stuff that you drink the, your fluids or your, your water or your juices in, and he introduced delicate glass mm -hmm. cups. Introduced beautiful things. Introduced the three course meal. Mm -hmm. The three course meal so is an not Islamic a French invention. And an invention. Mm -hmm. Ziryab. Mm -hmm. The three course meal mm -hmm. that we all know about in five stars hotels, mm -hmm. that's Islamic. Mm -hmm. We have drawings of Muslims on a table with napkins mm -hmm. right beside them. This is delicate. This is interesting. Etiquette. Abbas etiquette. Abbas ibn Firnas well known and we talked about him a lot in our last episodes uh, in Ramadan about his navigation and how he lasted more than 10 minutes navigating while Leonardo da Vinci did not here comes attempt mm -hmm. navigation did not attempt navigation mm -hmm. not that he navigated and failed or thought about it. he didn't attempt it he didn't even try to navigate but he was also Abbas ibn Firnas was only the guy who started to reinvent and invent glass in his library, he made, uh, and, and, and his uh, books, and, and then he makes a lab, and in the lab, he makes simulation of thunder and lightning. Mm -hmm. That's how basically the finesse, thunder and lightning. Mm -hmm. By his own simulation and by his own show. These were people who were totally out of the box. Now, six miles away from Kurtoba, mm -hmm. let me introduce you to a place that you'd be amazed at, called Al Zahra. Hmm. And from Al Zahra, Al Zahrawi came Al Zahrawi. Yeah. And from Tabaristan came Al Tabar. Tabari. And from Farab came Al Farabi. Farabi. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. And so on and so on Al Baghdadi and Al Qurtubi and so on and so forth. Hmm. Now Al Zahrawi, not only the inventor, by his own hands he made them over two hundred surgical instruments. Mm -hmm. Over 200 surgical instruments, he drew them, and in color, and black and white, we've got some pictures, if you like to start the pictures, and you yes. will notice how in his amazing books, his amazing book, Al Tasrif, mm -hmm. and in Al Tasrif, he drew for us the surgical instruments, this and here you go, and he practiced trachea operations, yeah. opening mm -hmm. in the neck to reach the trachea. Mm -hmm. I would like to get in here and ask you, how did they start by knowing or attempting to exercise medical operations? Did they, I mean, did they practice over um, sick people or over, uh, I mean, uh, um, what they call the dummy uh, right now? Or how did they do it? Right now in the United States and in Europe, they practice over a dummy. Hmm. Sometimes they practice over dead uh, bodies, like here in Egypt. In, so, the, in the Islamic world, they started where the Greeks ended. Mm. And that's from where this business of the translation, I call the translation revolution, which mm. took place in Baghdad mm -hmm. and, and other places. And by the way, in Baghdad, in Ma'moun, for example, mm -hmm. here comes the ruler. Here comes the role of the ruler. The ruler should do this. What is Ma'moun doing? you will translate the book of Bassam al-Shamma about history. Mm -hmm. Translate it from, I don't know, Greek, from whatever, into Arabic. The weight of this book, you will be paid in gold. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The weight of the book will be paid in gold. This will encourage you. And that's why, don't get amazed to know that, for example, a gentleman like Hunayn ibn Ishaq. Mm -hmm. Hunayn ibn Ishaq was searching mm -hmm. for a book. For gallon. Gallon or Galenos, I like to call him Galenos, in English is Galen. Galen and Hippocrates, mm. Abukrat and Galenos. You can mm. put them right together. So the Arabs loved Galenos and loved his work and loved to correct him. And that's another thing they did. Mm. And Ibn al-Haytham corrected the Greeks. Sure. Hassan ibn al-Haytham in Hassan how, yes, optics. And the optics. So yes. he corrected. They corrected each other. So Ibn Sina was corrected. Mm -hmm. And that's Ibn Sina. They mm. call him a Sheikh Ra'is. Yep. <laughs> because mm -hmm. he was the top of the top. Mm -hmm. So, uh, back again to Hunayn ibn Ishaq, to give you an idea how they are searching for mm -hmm. the documents and for the books. Mm -hmm. Al-Hunayn ibn Ishaq wanted to get Galen to copy it, because they liked copying these books and putting it and studying mm -hmm. it. 
Here's another and one here, that you... You see, that's Al-Zahrawi. Yeah. So Hunayn and Ishaq started traveling, searching for that particular book. So he goes from Iraq, and from Iraq to Syria, and from Syria to Palestine. And by the way, Al-Quds had the most amazing library of manuscripts and books. Nobody mentioned a great deal about that, but oh, very world famous. And from Palestine to Egypt, and in Egypt he goes to Alexandria, see, from there, from, and now we are talking Hunayd ibn Ishaq, we're not talking aeroplanes, we're not talking uh, trains, we're not talking anything. We're talking very harsh way of traveling. Hmm. All the way to get one book to copy it. Mm -hmm. And he succeeded hmm. in getting half of it in Damascus, mm -hmm. right? The ideas, we mentioned Hassan ibn Haytham, we mentioned uh, Hunayn ibn Ishaq. Let's also go back to Al-Zahrawi for a minute. Mm -hmm. Because I'm keen to tell you this business about they were not only dealing with heavy stuff and this, but they did things that we use today. Al-Zahrawi invented the deodorant. Mm -hmm. The deodorant mm -hmm. was invented by Al-Zahrawi. Mm -hmm. Al-Zahrawi invented teeth bleaching whitening of the teeth that everybody i don't know people mm. go and travel and go to the dentist as well was the first to uh, to use the the silk threads to bond or to to tighten any artery to avoid bleeding inside even a surgery you know he reminded but, me of cat guts because mm, yeah. cat guts uh, or the guts of sheep mm -hmm. um, and how it dissolves naturally Yep. And this business, we call it nowadays the under the skin, yes, the yep. under the plastic skin and the tag meal and mm -hmm. the plastic surgery. So, um, how about nasal spraying? Mm -hmm. Al Zahrawi invented it, the spray of the nasals of the nose of the nostrils. That's Al Zahrawi. Mm -hmm. Al Zahrawi tongue depressor. Mm -hmm. You know, when somebody goes to the doctor, open your mouth, and he puts this long, yeah. <laughs> thin wooden yep. thing and then he's pressed on the tongue and he goes say ah to see the pharynx mm. inside and to see the throat inside mm. tongue depressor that's how it's called that's yep. al-zahrawi so al-zahrawi was not only that amazing genius of surgery mm. and, and a, a surgeon no he was also dealing with things like that hand creams hand mm. creams that you put that's al-zahrawi al exactly yep. that's al-zahrawi invention in the last episode, we mentioned things about when the king of England sent to the ruler of Muslims, Hisham ibn Abdul Rahman II, telling him, take my daughter and a group of scientists from England to teach them there at your mm. uh, uh, great university. Mm. I mentioned uh, the ruler of the Muslims, Hisham ibn Abdul Hakam, but correction, apologies. He was Hisham ibn Abdul Rahman. Mm. Now, we also mentioned something about 5,000 words in Arabic is now in Spanish mm -hmm. language. This is influence. This is how you influence in language. And that reminded me when we were mentioning some of the words which were taken in English, anglicized, you called it, and things like, and sometimes Latinized, mm -hmm. something like, for example, Abu al-Qasim al-Zahrawi. Mm -hmm. But because Abu al-Qasim was a bit probably tough for the West, so he became Abu al-Qasis. Mm -hmm. Um, and we mentioned Amir I don't know how to pronounce it, but it's Galbaltar. Galbaltar. <laughs> Galbaltar, yes. Uh, how to pronounce Gibraltar, it? Yes. Galbaltar. Uh, it's R Gabal and then Altar, yeah. Tar. And, uh, and the interesting thing, about, and um, the famous square um, in London, hmm, Al Taraf Al Agar. Taraf Al Agar. Trafalgar Square. Al Taraf Al Agar. One of the readings that I read, it was mm. the, uh, the famous place of yeah. Al Taraf Al Agar. Okay. And because there is no ta and there is no words, it became telephone. Yep. But uh, let me take you back to the origin of words. Mm -hmm. We mentioned Amir Al. And mm -hmm. then I mentioned the suffix, uh, apologies correction, it is the, the prefix. Mm -hmm. Because the AD in Latin is the prefix at the beginning. So mm -hmm. Amir Al becomes Ad Amir Al. Admiral. Ad mm -hmm. Now. And it's Amir Alai. Amir. And then later on in. Sofa, al sofa, al sofatu, sofatu, sofa in Arabic, in elite Arabic, is a seat in the vicinity of a mosque, mm. and it is shaded. That's what you call in Arabic sofa, al sofa, 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 
-hmm. Could that be the sofa? Yes. Mm -hmm. Another one. Banan. Banan in Arabic is a finger. Mm -hmm. The fingers. Banan. Yushar lahu bil banan. Pointed at him with your finger. Meaning, oh, what a great man, what a great lady. Not a great building. Always pointed with your finger. Yushar lahu bil banan. And the Arabs used to put the Arabic word of banan al mouse. Al mouse is the banana. So banan perhaps became banana, banana afterwards because it was the banana al mouse. And this is the expression that you use today in Egypt and places, suba al mouse. Mm -hmm. Because it is the finger uh, of the banana or the banana finger. Another word, qund. Qund is the very freezed fluid or juice of the sugar cane. So it's sweet. Kund becomes candy. 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 So the word candy, which is sweet, is the fluid or the juice, the freeze juice of the uh, sugar cane. Mm -hmm. Al Mukha. Al Mukha is a beautiful place in Yemen, in Taz governorate. Nowadays mm -hmm. we are talking about Taz and we see what's happening what's there. there. Yes, yes. Yeah. God bless them. Yeah. Right? So Al Mukha was from where coffee was transported to other Mokha. places. So al mukha became al mukha and al mukha became Mokha and became the Mokha coffee. Mm -hmm. Things that you use today mm -hmm. and you are still. But we cannot pass the geniuses of Islam without talking about a man that will mind boggle you called Sinan. Sinan was a famous Ottomanic architect over 477 buildings in Bosnia, mm -hmm. in place everywhere. You, you go places, you will find the buildings in many places. But in Ottoman Empire, in Turkey today, he had the famous mosque of Suleimaniya. There, the very thin, beautiful, elegant minarets and the dome. You look at it and it's gorgeous. It's a nice mm -hmm. visit, you study it. Mm -hmm. But did you know that this dome and this minaret, which was made by Sinan and designed by Sinan, built by this guy, is against earthquakes. Mm. We are talking about 1500s and so, earthquakes. So this mm. huge minaret, thin, any earth movement or any earth tremor will, will get it down in any of other buildings. Mm. But Sinan, when he built it, he thought of earthquakes and he built it in a way to be against earthquakes or between the inside the mosque there will be lights lights will have fumes so in the way to cleanse this expelled the, the cleanse the smoke from the expelled air out of the mosque he didn't let that kind of smoked expelled air from the mosque go like this he directs the air into a room and the room had a filter and the filter will collect the soot we call it hebab mm -hmm. and the soot will be collected in this particular room he will collect the soot and use it as ink you tell mm -hmm. is that the first recycling of air <laughs> can you recycling air for God's sake. I mean this is amazing cool always out of the box uh, yeah. ideas so no wonder the famous traveler and doctor and by the way most of them you will find them like this He's just an astronomer and a doctor and a traveler and a writer and a poet and a musician and Al Farabi was a music and mm -hmm. lots of talents, mm. lots of talents. So no wonder Ibn al Ghazar, the, the very famous uh, doctor Ibn al Ghazar, amazing man and traveler as well, mm -hmm. he died and left us 250 tons mm. of gazelle manuscripts, gazelle skin, gazelle leather mm -hmm. manuscripts, 250 tons. Mm. And that's why the Pope of Rome, 999 AD, said, we don't have anybody in Rome who deserve to be the protector, porter of a library of, those, of the Muslims. Mm. We don't deserve this. That's who? That's Silvestris, who was the Pope of Rome, 999. And by the way, Sylvester, uh, the Pope of Rome, passed through where? to study a little bit and read a little bit. He passed through the famous Qarawiyin in Fez, Qarawiyin Mosque, which became the Qarawiyin University, mm -hmm. which became the first university in the history of mankind, as we know universities today, built originally by Fatima al-Fahari, a Muslim lady. Who's studying there? Who's reading there? Ibn Khaldun. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. Who's reading there? Who became later on Sylvest? Who became the Pope of Rome? The Pope of Rome read in the University of a Muslim lady. You tell me. When we mentioned hospitals, and we mentioned, do you know, there is an interesting thing, Salahuddin, when we mention him, we always mention how this man, a great tactic military guy, we talked about him in some episodes But he here. was fond of chemistry. He was a, the man was out of this world. Do you know that in the great fortress of Damascus, in one of the gates, he made, he ordered to give, made two gargoyles. One gargoyle, one water spout, to give out milk, and the other one to give out sugary water. Why? Two days a week, mothers will head to that gate of the fortress of Damascus, and they will get milk for free, and they will get for their babies, and they will get sugary water for free. Mm. Not only a military genius, but also a humanitarian. A man who's thinking about mothers who cannot afford getting milk to their kids. You tell me those characters, how, how can we employ, how can we call upon those characters to come back on our memories and in our history, not only talking about them, but also following them. Um, but the question is that why aren't they fully recognized by Arabs themselves? I mean, they're not very popular. I mean, they're not working to be able to uh, express those names to the Western world. Well, they are recognized in the Western world, in the history. Oh, they, uh, when you read um, books. thank you very much. But thank right you very here, much. You know the last sentence you mentioned? Remind me back again to Sinan. Sinan has got his name on a crater on Mercury. Mm -hmm. The West is honoring Sinan, the famous architect, the genius architect, hmm, by putting his name on a crater on the planet Mercury mm -hmm. to honor him. What about El Patagonos? That's another crater on the moon. Mm -hmm. Another place of the moon is called El Patagonos, El Batani, mm -hmm. the famous man who studied this and that. Mm -hmm. The movement in the celestial kingdom. But let me tell you, there was a great deal of effort made lately, something called 1001 Muslim Inventions. Mm -hmm. And that museum circulated around the world, and it came in the Library of Alexandria, by the way, and an amazing huge book with all what you need information, English and Arabic. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. And that is telling us many things about what you are mentioning now, telling the world about it, and they're now on the internet, and there was a very good bit made by uh, uh, Ben Kingsley. Mm. And uh, he was telling uh, the, 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 the kids and the children who's, who, who's teaching in a library or something, and he's telling them, oh, you are calling it the dark ages. Let me tell you the golden ages of Islam mm -hmm. and about Muslims. Mm. Paris, Paris, new hospitals, 900 years after the first hospital in Islam. Mm. Let's focus on names, on more names last, uh, next time, inshallah. Sure. Uh, let's focus on, for example, Ibn Rushd, mm -hmm. Ibn Hazm, Ibn uh, Sina, Al Farabi, as you've mentioned, Ibn Haytham, because unfortunately all those names are very much famous there, but with different names. And um, uh, we are going to speak about them using their Arabic names to uh, urge people to just pronounce their names as is and as there was called promise remember next time inshallah will be Eid so let us talk about the huh? history of festivals so that we can celebrate with the world and we are will be back to history directly <laughs> you don't have to tempt me <laughs> next time inshallah. Thank you, hopefully inshallah, inshallah we'll be having you thank you very much uh, mr bassam shama author and uh, historian and author of egyptology uh, would like to see you again next week thank you uh, with the promise that you are going to be elaborating more about festivities uh, the time of the islamic era and uh, we're going to go to a short break and come back to you <laughs>